In some problems, it's convenient to break things down into cylindrical coordinates. So in the cylindrical coordinate system, if we have a particle, let's say a particle right here, all right, we have the coordinate system where we have a radial component and a transverse component. This theta direction is called the transverse direction. All right, and we know the particle has a velocity here, and so we can break down the particle's velocity into the, both of those components. So the velocity, I'll just write down this equation first and then I'll explain it. So we have the velocity in the radial component times the unit vector in the radial component plus the velocity in the transverse direction times the unit vector in the transverse uh, direction here. Okay, so the velocity in the radial direction is nothing more than the change in the radius with respect to time. As it grows longer or shorter, we're just looking for the change in that radius over, the, over time. And then in the transverse direction, the velocity component in the transverse direction is then equal to r times theta dot. So how fast is theta here changing, all right? So the velocity in terms of radians per second in the transverse direction, all right? Radians per second times the radius is then equal to how fast it's moving in this direction. And those are the two components. Now if we write down the acceleration vector, it gets more complex. So we have the acceleration in the radial direction, times the unit vector in the radial direction plus the acceleration in the transverse direction times the unit vector in the transverse direction. So what does AR equal? AR is equal to, uh, let's see, R double dot, so the second derivative of the radius, minus R theta double dot, or R theta dot squared, and then in the transverse direction, we have r theta double dot plus two times r dot theta dot. Okay, so I think I got those right. Let's double check. So this is where it gets a little more complex. 